I'm recording. Hi, Jake. Hi, good morning. So today we are trying to focus on Japanese cards. Um, and I want to give you, I guess, and the viewer a quick overview of what we're hoping to cover. So in general, you know, Pokemon is a Japanese company. Japanese cards have always been coming out uh, first before their English counterparts. Um, nowadays, I think modern sets, the Japanese cards usually come out about three months before they get translated into English. Uh, not all of them get translated into English for the current sets, but then they make these special reprint sets that include a bunch of Japanese cards, like Hidden Fates was. Um, and so the first question, you know, is like, is it worth buying or investing in the Japanese versions of cards that were also in English and the, the sets, right? Basically all the sets come out in English. Are the Japanese versions worth anything? If so, how much are they worth doing? Um, but then transition yeah. after that and talk about all the cards that were printed in Japanese, but not in English. And so there are a bunch of different categories of those. Some of them are pretty mm -hmm. obscure, pretty strange. Jake has some like really weird cards. I'm hoping he's going to show us. Um, and so in future videos, I think we can spend like an entire video on each of those special, you know, categories of cards only in Japanese and not in English, but at least for today, we can give everyone an overview of like what they are, where they come from and roughly sort of like how you think about investing in them. Okay. Um, so to start off, I guess, like what is, what is the typical price difference between English and Japanese cards when they, they both exist? Um, so I guess starting just with, with um, the set cards. So these, you know, all of your English sets that we've been talking about in our videos, all of the Wizards of the Coast sets, for example, and the E-series sets and these things, they all have counterparts in Japanese. So I'll show, this is um, uh, Houndoom. Um, it's called, uh, in Japanese, the set is called Mysterious Mountains. It's basically the Sky Ridge equivalent in English. Um, and these cards, uh, I think it's the type of thing similar to the PSA 10, PSA 9, first edition unlimited in English. Japanese gives you another version where you can have the exact same art um, at a cheaper value, at a cheaper price. And so as you see increases in the English versions of these cards, you're also going to see increases in these Japanese versions of these cards. And I think you're seeing that now. Um, some of the main differences uh, uh, and really important differences when you're thinking of uh, English to Japanese is understanding that each each category of sets have different variables um, in English versus Japanese. So, for example, let's take these these um, let's take uh, uh, you know jungle fossil these neo and the neo sets for example. So, in the booster boxes, there are sixty packs in these booster boxes instead of the thirty six packs that you might see in English. So you get many more packs uh, and then you also get a hollow. You get one of these hollows in every pack in those sets. Base set is different. You don't get a, a in Japanese, you don't get it one in every, in every um, uh, pack. So it, it, it depends on the set, but for those sets that I said, the, the, the jungle through Neo, um, which is going to make these cards much less rare, uh, much less scarce. Also grading these cards is often easier than their English equivalents, much easier. So you do have some centering issues on the Japanese hollows, but you don't have the printing, the printing line issues and you don't have the whitening issues generally. You, you do on some, but to a much lesser degree. So when you open a pack, you're getting, you're, when you open a box, you're getting 60 packs instead of that 36, you're getting 60 hollows out of that pack. And, and many of those 60 hollows are gonna grade 10. You have a good chance of getting a lot of 10s. Whereas you open an English box, the English box is, is more expensive, quite a bit more expensive already, just the, just the booster box itself. Then you're getting less packs. Only a third of those packs are going to be hollows because in English, it's one every three packs is a hollow. Um, the point being that the, the cost to get these Japanese hollows right now is, so, is a lot less. So don't, you should not equip you. So even if someone wants the Japanese cards and has a better uh, connection to those Japanese cards, um, it's much easier for them to get that. So, this, so the, the supply and demand here is, is another factor. So even if there were an even amount of people collecting the Japanese cards and an even amount of people collecting the English, the Japanese should still be cheaper because of that supply and demand. Yeah. So those so are some of the key things feels, to think about. Yeah, and it feels like in the end for those, set, those sets, Japanese is like another variable, right? So like, yeah. you know, you could have the, the PSA 9 instead of the 10. You could have the unlimited instead of the first edition. And you could have the Japanese instead of the English, right? But if you're going for like the best of everything, most collectors will probably want at least one copy of the English version. 
Yeah, you know, I think one one interesting thing to <laughs> throw out here that we could forget in in on the English side is that uh, people collect mostly English and speak English. Uh, these cars are from Japan, so I think some people some people do like the original, and the original is actually the the Japanese version of these mm -hmm. cards. So that there does increase some some collectability, and I do think that there is definitely a market now, and always going to be a market for these cards. Um, but yeah, but yeah. but particularly in the English world, you're seeing English collectors right now are are going for those harder to grade, harder to find English versions. Yeah, so the Japanese. So, so yeah. now put everything aside that we just talked about aside for a moment, right? Because sure. let's talk about the cards that you could only get in Japanese. And I want to yeah. start with something that still is like so weird to me, cards that existed before the current Pokemon TCG. So tell us a little bit mm -hmm. about those. Mm -hmm. Sure. So um, I'll, I'll show a couple examples. So um, two of my favorites. So these are, these are set sets that, that existed yeah, before the TCG. So these were not played in a game. They have the images. Uh, they're sort of, they're full arts. They're, they're kind of like the first, the first full art in terms of the modern uh, uh, Pokemon full arts. And I'll show a couple examples. So this is a, a Dragonite, um, one of my favorite Pokemon um, from uh, 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 this Topson set. It says 1995 on it, but actually there's some debate on the year that it was actually created. People think that it was created a little bit after that, even though it says that 1995, because it says 1995 on the card. When we talk more about that set, we can really go into great detail. Um, here's a, uh, a Charizard, really cool art in this set. Um, this is probably my favorite vintage set in terms of the art. Um, really, sorry, pre-TCG set in terms of the art. Um, and so, for example, in this Topson set, um, these Top, Holofoil Topson versions- Topson like the company that printed them? Um, you know, I don't know the answer to that. It's just uh, what you call I don't think so. I believe, card. yeah, I th I'm, so I know Nintendo still made these and they were with like Game Freak and, but I don't know, I don't know why they're called Topson. Um, uh, but, um, but yeah, so they are uh, like this. These holofoils are one in forty in the packs to get a holofoil. Wow. So there are the normal top zone cards. I don't have one here, and then there are these holofoil ones. So there's a lot of chase involved in these. These cards, like in PSA ten, have less than you know ten in the world type of thing graded. Um, Give us an idea of value too. Like how much is a typical card yeah. from that set worth, and then how much is like the most valuable cards from that set worth? So, gosh, so with everything else, the prices are moving a lot. Um, these these Topsoon Hollows are a lot rarer than these prisms. Um, but these prisms have really cool art, so they these kind of go back and forth. I think these both have a lot of different value. Um, the Charizard, this Charizard PSA 10 was selling for maybe about four to 500. It's probably quite a bit more valuable now. I think this was very underpriced given its history, given its age, and given how few of these there are. There are very, very few of these also, like under, you know, around 20 probably in the world in PSA 10. Um, this is probably, this was going for four to 500. Now it's probably over a thousand. Um, and I think still has a lot of room to grow. I think once these get more appreciated and are seen as sort of the old original cards. Um, with those full art images. Uh, um, yeah, so we have those, which were the pre-TCG. Then we have vending series, vending series cards. Um, these vending series cards, you were you actually got, and these were the first cards that you can see, they have the uh, different moves and fighting abilities. So these are actual the same game. And I, rem I remember seeing that symbol, right? Their set symbol is that little like black and white Pokeball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, and so these are before base set. These are before base set in Japanese, um, and these you could get from vending machines. That's why they're called vending series, and you would actually peel them off a, a sheet, a vending sheet. Um, so these are really cool. A lot of them have these like I picked this one in particular because it has like this hand drawn art, hand drawn style. They couldn't even um, draw a, a lot circle. of <laughs> a lot of really cool art, interesting art from these. Um, none of this you're going to see. None of these cards that I'm showing you you're going to see. I'm just going to, as a reminder, you're going to see in English. These are just Japanese versions. Um, and then we have um, Japanese. Did that, did that, sorry, did that vending series have like Charizard and Blastoise or no? 
Uh, it did not. Okay. And how much it is that not. like? They did that have like the legendary shipping. birds. How much is the Volta worth? Yeah. Uh, probably thirty dollars right now in PSA ten. So there might be room for these to grow a lot. Um, maybe they've already grown. I haven't looked at these in a while. Maybe they've gone up to fifty. I'm not really sure. But but these cards have always been pretty uh, affordable and pretty, um, and you can find them. Um, even though they're age, you know, these are from 1998, you know, the other ones were from 1997, 1996, 95. So very old. Um, the thing that, that Japanese tends to excel on, uh, beyond those, those first ones that I showed and now I'm going to start showing our promos. So Japanese has these exclusive promos and they have really cool, um, like some of the old, the old back Japanese, um, and I can, when I say old back, um, let me see. I can show the differences between old back Japanese. This is old back Japanese. This mm -hmm. is what, what it used to look like on the back. And this is what the new back looks like. Mm -hmm. So different back. So when I say old back, um, they have like these Misaki promos, for example. Oh, wow. Um, so that has the same symbol as the vending series, right? Yeah. So these were actually considered as part of the vending um, time period. Uh, they're also like red and green set, starter sets that have this symbol. There are a lot of different types of, of, of sets around that exact period that had that symbol. Um, How much is that card like, worth? Um, this card's worth, yeah, these have been going up a lot too. Um, for a long time, this was selling like at 150. It's probably, you know, two to 300 for sure now, maybe 300. I, I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. sure. Um, uh, this, the, these cards, uh, along with some others I'm going to show you, they, you, you got them in interesting ways. They had different kinds of distribution. These were not things that you would open in packs. Um, this card in particular, you actually sent off vending series cards. I won't go into the specific details. We can talk about them in a later video, but you'd send them to the Pokemon company if you had the right ones, and then they would send you back oh, cool. that card. Things yeah. like that. Um, Do you have the, the like, different yeah. versions of like the Charizard and Blastoise and Venusaur? I, I do own them. I don't have them sitting. I think you're referring to the CD promo. I think that's what it is. And they like um, the Charizard looks like the Charizard from the, let me see if I can find it online while you're talking. Sure. Yeah. So those are extremely common. There are a ton of them. Mm. Um, really cool. They're always going to have value, uh, but their value is not going to be as high as like Masaki promos and the next cards I'm going to show you. And I guess yeah. I'll, uh, can you, it's this one, right? keep showing or should I wait? Um, this is the CD promo? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, I love these cards. So, so, so these were easier to get than like the, the Alakazam you just showed me? A lot of these exist. Like you can see, they're, they're going to be a lot on eBay. You can still get them for affordable amounts. These, these likely will, will take a very long time to uh, yeah. Yeah. really these are the seriously appreciate about. in value. Yeah. yeah. So cool. these are, yeah. Um, and then they also had the, the, the Snorlax and the, um, the, the Porygon yeah. as part of that. Um, some of these later ones, so these, these, these cards are very rare and, and quite valuable. Um, what is these that? player play a uh, fan club. Um, this one says 500 points. So basically you had to be a part of this fan club. You got points for doing different activities in Japan. And if you got 500 points, they would send you this card. Mm -hmm. So that's how and that's, that, that, like that program points. never existed in America or in English speaking countries. Um, no, no, these, these, these only exist in, in Japan. Um, and then you would have like different, like this is McDonald's promo. This is a pretty well-known famous card. Um, it's really cool. How much is that worth? Again, everything's been changing so much. What's it called? Uh, so I can look it up. I'm not even sure. Um, most people call it the sunrise Mew, but sunrise. it's, it's Mew McDonald's promo. What does it mean? McDonald's promo? Like it, like. So they partnered with McDonald's and McDonald's and, and Pokemon made a number of like promo cards together. And they had, they had English McDonald's promos too, right? Um, it, I remember getting some of those. They They're do. a little bit different. Yeah. They do. Different I'll years share. later on. Yeah. This is the one you're talking about, right? Um, yes. Okay. So at least ungraded, not like crazy valuable, but I think it looks so awesome. This one is probably, that one is going to be extremely damaged for only $29 because they're more in like the 300 to 400 range, I would say. In when they're PSA, PSA okay. Yeah. Yeah. So for example, for like $40, like if those cards were like mint, you should buy them right away. But yeah. probably if you look on the back, there's going to be a lot of damage on those cards. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, probably bends and different sorts of things in them for those prices. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I've, I've, and so nowadays, so we talk about different kinds of promos, right? And nowadays, my yeah. understanding is the Pokemon Center, also like the, those stores in Japan give out a lot of promos or you can buy boxes with the promos. Like there are those like Pikachus that dress up in different costumes. I know that mm -hmm. Pikachu dressed up as Mario and Luigi and like Pikachu dressed up as Charizard. Do you have any of those? Yes. I also have some of those that I brought over. Um, so we have the, the non-full art um, Pikachu dressed up as Charizard. Mm -hmm. so these are some of the more modern promos. Here's a full art uh, Quasa Pikachu. How much are those worth, roughly? Um, again, I'm not sure. I think that the the PSA nine full art was going for maybe like eighty, eighty in the eighty ish range for a while. Mm -hmm. The other one was going for maybe sixty, seventy, probably over a hundred. A lot of these cards have doubled in value mm -hmm. over the last six months or so. Um, yeah, but I think that. I think when you're thinking about these cards um, and thinking about which one do I want to buy, which one do I want to invest in here, go back to that pop report idea. Look at the pop report, go to Bulbapedia, which is a great resource, Bulbapedia, and read about the history of the card. Mm -hmm. Is the history of the card appealing to you? The way that it was, the way that it was, you know, some of these, some of the modern ones, for example, were pretty mass produced and you can get, were given out at like the Pokemon Center in Japan. Some of these other ones were like handed out to kids who only scored a certain amount of points mm -hmm. in something. And they were much, they're much rarer. They're much harder to find in, in mint condition. Mm -hmm. um, so Bullpedia, it looks like has information on all these cards. Everything. Bullpedia is like great. Set. Yeah. So Bullpedia, Bullpedia is the best place to go when you're, yeah, just looking for like the facts of the card, how it was distributed. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still refer to this all the time. Yeah. So we covered the stuff that was made before the Pokemon TCG, a lot of the promos, although there are probably tons more that we could talk about. Um, yeah. And then were there any like entire sets that were printed in Japanese that never had English versions? Yeah. So the two sets that were printed in Japanese that didn't have English versions were, were the vend vending series that we did talk about. Okay. Considered. And there are three different sort of sets within the vending series. Um, bending series one, two, and three. It was like Coke um, and Sprite and Rapier. <laughs> um, the other, the other set, and you showed some of these cards yourself, and I know this is one of your favorite sets, is the Versus series set. So I'll show the Charizard from this set. Yeah, it's a non-hollow Charizard. Um, non-hollow common card. <laughs> a common Charizard <laughs> card, um, which does lower the value on this card because this card, like, if this card was super super scarce and rare, the value would be huge because the art in this card is incredible. Um, yeah. Because there are a, a lot of these cards, the value has, has mostly been around $100, probably probably up to 150 now, maybe, um, for that card because it's a common card and you can get a lot of them if you have the, the Versus Series packs. So these, you know, to go to your point, these were actually um, found in packs. So right. these were these were were added on. These are sort of like the um, they the gym the gym heroes and gym challenge sets that we had in English. They also had those cards in Japanese, but they also added these cards to go along with it. So and this was like see, the golden there silver. There are gym leaders. I think, I think gym they leaders had, on all of these. Right, right. The golden cards, silver the, game series. There are gym leaders. Mm -hmm. I have one too. I got one here to show. This is I don't know if right. I showed this in the first video, but um, oh my gosh, the background. The Karen's <laughs> Tyranitar. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. So here is the Karen's Tyranitar. And so Karen was a gym leader in the second series. And so the reason I love this set is I think it's like the only time that they made um, stuff that was Pokemon that were owned by the gym leaders in that yeah. set, in that series. Yeah. And it's only in Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, I guess one, you know, one, a couple more cards I can show before we end here. If you have any more questions for me, this one's really cool. I'm going to show, uh, show this one. Um, great art only in Japanese, this, this Mui X. So if you want this art, you have to get this as part of the player pl uh, play promo again, awarded to people who got a certain amount of points, as you can see points up in the, um, mm -hmm. explanation. And then you have these really old cards. Um, not I mean, they had, not they had a Rocky. different English version of that birthday Pikachu, right? Where you can write your name on it. Yes, those and the English ones are a lot more common. So that mm -hmm. card is a lot rarer, a lot harder a to find, art. and a yeah. lot more valuable. Yeah. Um, so, general, yes, do you think about, to learn about 
yeah, I think at some point we'll have to make a video on each of these sets because they're so cool. Yeah. Um, but do you think about it as like these Japanese cards that were never printed in English? Are they like chase cards, like trophy cards? You just see them as like one more set to collect. Um, so these, these, a lot of these, let me see if any of them don't have that. Some of a few of them have it a little bit less, but so these cards are part of sort of like a, a set, not, not a set that you would open from, from a pack, but like these, this is part of that player's promo set. So there are a lot of these player promo cards. So I have like all of the, this set. So I liked collecting okay. these, these sets that have unique art. Um, you can cl collect all the fan club, you know, cards, you can collect all of the full art. You know, so you have people after the, the full sets of these, which does make them more collectible. I guess the last thing to talk about um, in Japanese and, and a really important thing to talk about. So the top of the, the mountain, the most expensive cards in Pokemon are Japanese cards right now. There's one English card that's very, that, that is also very expensive uh, called this Ishihara GX card. It's a modern, it's, it's a modern card. It was a war, it was given to um, like, it was in honor of like the president of, of uh, Ishihara, the president of Pokemon, um, his birthday and was given out to a few people and that card has surfaced other, other than that very specific card, which still is not as valuable as the most expensive in Japanese, but is very expensive. Um, most, of your, most of your really collectible, really scarce rare cards are in Japanese. You do have the Art Academy cards in English, which are very valuable and, and very rare and scarce, but nothing touches the Japanese cards. And the Japanese cards that I'll talk about are some of the trophy cards. So you've got, you know, most people consider the Pikachu Illustrator as the, as the, as the chase card of the hobby or the most valuable card in the hobby. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are about 26 copies of that in the world. Um, uh, other people don't think that should be the most valuable card and don't consider it the most valuable card and prefer the, the, the first trophy cards ever. The trophy cards were given out to the winners of the, of the Pokemon tournament. So the first ones are, I don't know if you want to show pic pictures of these because I don't yeah. have them. I'll, but um, I was trying to find the, um, the Pikachu Illustrator. It's not on eBay, probably predictably. Where do these ones So there is one. There is actually one on eBay for sale for like $2 million or something. Really? Yeah. So if you put in uh, Pikachu Illustrator, what did you put in? Pikachu Illustrator PSA. See if it comes up now and then go high speed. Oh wow. <laughs> so this is SM Pratt, Scott Pratt. Um, he has the biggest, from what I know, he has the biggest collection of these old uh Japanese cards and own and, and owns um a lot of these. Um, this is just basically the most scarce one-off promo card that's ever existed. Yeah. And if you type in trophy Pokemon card, yeah, and go to uh, uh highest. Well, that's probably a good way to, to see a bunch of these. Um, so these are the, uh, below that first one are the first ever. So not this one, but, but these. Mm -hmm. um, some of these are considered to be like the, like this card is particularly loved because of the art on it. <laughs> that <laughs> so, you. <laughs> so do you have any of those trophy cards? No, I don't have any of these like original top of the mountain. Unfortunately, because I got in collecting only two and a half years ago or two years ago, I um, these cards are out of my financial reach at the moment. I hope to one day be able to buy these, but who knows how expensive they'll get if they'll continue to go up and if I'll right, have that sort of right. money. Um, um, so anything, I mean, we, we'll get more into this in, in future videos, go through specific sure. sets. Anything you want to end on in terms of a takeaway of, of collecting the, the special Japanese cards? Um, so I think for serious Pokemon collectors, uh, well, I, there can be serious English Pokemon collectors too. I don't want to diss anyone out there, or, but I think that, um, uh, there's more fun things to chase. So it, it adds a lot of chase and rarity, um, particular, uh, per, um, some specific cards and specifically these promos that I showed, but also that's those top of the mountain cards, if you really want to go for that. So on the English side, other, you know, that Ishihara GX card, which is a weird sort of one-off card right now, you've got the Art Academy, you've got the world's promo English cards, some of which I've shown in other videos yeah. that can, those can range up to, you know, those can be pretty valuable. You do have the English trophy cards and the full art English trophy cards, which we can talk about in other videos that can be very valuable, but nothing, you know, for right now touches those, those Japanese 
trophies in terms of rarity, scarcity, and price. Um, I, I really enjoy the Japanese cards. Again, the Japanese cards are the original um, and the Japanese cards have a lot of like really cool, interesting art. So uh, I think for Pokemon lovers, I think if you're just putting yourself in that English side, you're missing out on, on so much of the hobby. And um, yeah, so that'd be, those are my, my basic things. As a collector, I, I, I actually, I love to collect the, the Japanese as well. Cool. Yeah, Thank and as an guys. investor, there's there's money to there's definitely money to be made, and and there there's movement on all these cards like we're seeing on the English side, and um, I think you'll continue to see that in the future. Sounds good. Well, if I ever make a million dollars, now I know what to buy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whew, so expensive. My gosh. 